uh, you know, my, my story is very huge, you know, because, uh, you know, where I come from, you know, I am this kind of a person who is strongly embedded on my culture as Umzulu. Mm. So, you know, we use uh, storytelling as one of uh, those tools that, that, that were used in, in, the, in, in the olden times. You know, people in heritage institutions, they, they, they will say to you, this is the tool. You know, olden, uh, people in the olden days uh, use their, the, the, their memory to record the past so that we're able to understand the present and route the future, so that we're able to, to imagine the future. So about me, my grandfather narrated this story to me, how I came about that. You know, uh, grandson, there was uh, this huge uh, bird uh, that flew from that side as it was directly opposite with our homestead. Everybody in the, very, in the village took cover, re ran for cover. But only one brave woman, a beautiful young girl, was so brave. She, she stood there and looked up at this huge bed as it was directly opposite with our homestead and shining. She looked up and it opened its wings even further and a huge shit came from its belly white and shining and it came down somersaulting like a parachute whilst everybody was running away this young lady stood there and I received this white sheet and it landed on her hands. And she started looking at it, opened it. Wow, a handsome, beautiful boy cried. Wow, me. That's how I came about. That's how I was born. It's my story. Whoever attempts to nullify this story will have to explain why you falsify this story because it was told to me based on the African indigenous knowledge systems. It is because we here in Africa tend to uh, look down upon our own heritage, our own things. So I know that it is a fairy tale, but I insist on buying into the story and I love telling the story to, to people like, look at you, you are laughing because, you know, it, it, it brings that wonder even uh, 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 to you. I, I don't even have to be creative and that is me, Bongane Mangangane Mkize. And Mankankane, my, my the self same grandmother said, you know, this woman went away, and then there were these uh, beds. They came to, to our house, and they were there. And they, in Isizul, in Kankan, and they end the name Umankankan, and I love this name as well. And then I got educated. I loved education because I said, I need to add to the IKS in Ubuntu. Earlier on, we, you spoke about social cohesion and everything else. You know? The question is, who as Africans here in South Africa are attempting to actually find this so social cohesion with? Obviously, with our white counterparts. But unfortunately, they're not coming to the party. I can refer you to... Um, a summit in Clap Town, in Clap Town in July 2012. We ask a question as to, it means we are trying to reconcile amongst ourselves as a 
blacks according to the constitution because we don't see our white fellows here you know and uh, as you can see in my bio i went to sussex university one of the glamorous universities uh, uh, in the uk but through uh, my education i have through ages ensure that i do not lose my past because it is my heritage look at the indians you find a young indian a, a lady with a red dot here and they appreciate their things and that's why you see uh, the, the, their culture is, is is not disappearing because they love it today is a uh, hard eh, in the in the middle east these people are actually protecting what is theirs this is social cohesion. In this country, it is difficult to achieve uh, these things. You know. Well, I, I, I'll go on and on. How it affected me as an individual. Well, I'm now a grown up. I am a, a grandfather, a very proud grandfather. You know, I do these things, so many things with my grandchildren. And I ensure that within my homestead at home in the rural like the previous month was the, the heritage month that is uh, october fortunately in our own home we were celebrating umemulo for for my, for, for my niece i ensured that by but, but not ex to, to exaggerate just to do things as the elders were doing to ensure that we keep this culture intact. But then, in terms of apartheid, my mother was a Fosato. Yeah. Fosato was a federation for the Congress of uh, what, uh, Trade Unions, which is uh, today you know, a, a Cosato. So I was brought up in uh, Umzabalazo by my mother and my father, and they were alongside many leaders. So when I went to the university and when people were, were talking about release Mandela in the 1980s, those things were not new to me. Uh, to me. But uh, I did not allow apartheid to have a negative impact on me. Even if it was so cold, I knew that my mother wanted me to go to school. I knew that my father wanted me to go to school. They both met at uh, Lorem, uh, Total Lorem uh, uh, High School uh, in Deben. And they were also educationists in the olden times. And they told us that even if you don't have a particular tool, but with education, I I even within apartheid, there are things that you can Take from apartheid. Apartheid, of course, it was a bad ideology, but we cannot say everything within apartheid was bad. But it was a kind, of, they call it a grand apartheid. It was designed to actually dehumanize us, to ensure that we remain the servants of the white people. But look at you today. Look at what you are doing, all the opportunities, all the freedom that you are enjoying today, everything else. It is because of uh, these heroes and the heroines that laid down their souls when? During, the, during apartheid. And uh, coming uh, to date, you look at what is happening in other regions uh, in the world. You know, all these behaviors, people, t you know, into intolerance uh, in terms of uh, religion. Muslims versus uh, Christians. It is very disturbing. Here in this country, we are proud that as, Afri as, as South Africans, at Codesa 1 and 2, although we are able to identify gaps at Codesa, but as a democracy in South Africa, there is something that we achieved at, at Codesa. Going forward, celebrating 20 years of democracy, truly, guys, South Africa has a very bright future. But let us not forget, but we can forgive going forward. I can draw from my own experience here. 
I've been uh, involved in this project uh, in the last four years. And I personally gain a lot. And this tells me that South Africa indeed does have a future. As long as you young people take the responsibility, I repeat myself to say, please receive the baton and be thankful to people like what Tata Mandela or Steve Biko and many other heroes that laid down their lives. We really do have a future as an economy uh, in Southern Africa, in the continent and, and, and so on. We are the hub and hope of Africa, African Renaissance and so on. The people like people like uh, uh, Tabum Vielo, Mbegi and many others, you know, are, are failing to even rest because they want to ensure that we are not letting them down. Look at uh, Robert, poor Robert Mugabe. Today we are laughing at uh, the fact that uh, his wife, uh, Sarah, uh, no, Grace, thank you, she went to a university in, 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 in Zimbabwe within two months, then she was awarded a, a, a doctorate degree. We are laughing at it. So, but then doing such things, then it makes us as a continent a, a laughing stock. But we have to ask a question. Why is Mugabe doing this? Be critical in whatever you say and whatever you think. Why is Mugabe, you know, insisting on clinging on to power? People like uh, your Inkosi, uh, Mangosutu, Butelezi. What is it that makes such leaders, you know, fail to allow others to take the baton? It is the fear of the and to be overprotective because it means they don't trust us. They don't trust you. That hey, what we fought for would not be protected once we are no more. And this is painful. You know, the, the education system there is very rich. When we compare education system, schools 2025 20, and caps and all these visions and the national development and initiatives that come from uh, uh, parliamentarians, they, they, they have uh, this vision. But uh, still, there is organic inter intellectuals, people like Mugabe, Yobutelezi, and so on and so on. I, I see them as people with this fear, oh my God, when I'm gone, everything will be, it, it will be worse. It will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for them anyway.